Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at this, the Master Spool, a design by Richard Horn to reduce the shipping weight of spools by taking the spool, leaving it at home and only being sent a refill. If you want to know a little bit more about why and how and what, then there's a link in the description to Richard's original video about the Master Spool. So I recommend you go take a look at that if you haven't already. So today we're taking a look at the master spool, not specifically this one, but the idea in general. And I want to preface this with this is not a moan or a rant or any hate against the project. I really like the project. I want it to thrive. I want it to continue because I think us, the printers and the manufacturers can both gain from this idea. These ideas are going to be in a sort of quick fire format. I'm not going to dwell too much on any of them unless they're particularly important. Firstly, I think it needs to be lighter weight. This is 250 grams of filament in order to print for a 750 gram spool. Now, while they're obviously reusable and that's entirely the point, I think 250 grams of material is still quite a lot for a single spool holder. Secondly, it needs to be faster to print. This design in two parts printed on the Mark III, default 0.2 layer height in the fast setting for the Mark III, a fairly fast printer, took 16 and a half hours, which is quite a long time. Thirdly, I think the halves should lock together. So at the moment we have this thread, which is all well and good, but okay. Thirdly, I think the halves should lock together. At the moment we have this thread and if you do it tight, yes, it's kind of locked in place because it's plastic and there's some uh, compliance there. But as you're printing and it's vibrating and then you're storing and you're putting it back on and then there's more vibration, over time this could well loosen off. Next, now that this is not a disposable unit anymore, we can probably consider some higher quality features to be integrated. One of them could be bearings. Another one could be some mechanism to catch the filament if you let it go by accident. Another one could be an integrating mounting mechanism. So something where you just push it on and it's snapped into place and it's ready to go because there's a mechanism in the spool that holds it in place. One other thing we need to consider is now that these can be 3D printed fairly easily, these can't be recycled. One of the good advantages of the old system, although still an imperfect system, you could recycle the spools because they're made from a standard material, they have their material printed on them, and they can just be sent off and recycled. No, okay, they're not. I also think we should have a standard document. I know this is all very standardy and grown up, but some overriding, maybe just something on Google Sheets, that gives you overall dimensions, internal dimensions, other features, standard sizes of labels and such. One thing that's gonna be of interest to companies is marketing and branding on the spool. On version three, Rich has left a space for a label, but I think a lot of companies are already looking at like donut shaped labels, something that's gonna really stand out. So I think we need to set standards for what labels can be fitted, where these holes and things should be so that you can fit a label suitably, and if they're permanent or removable, new sticker over the top or something that can lift out and put back in you know there's a couple of things there that could be helpful helpful information about the filament that you've got it's probably also worth noting to users that the material you print this out of is fairly important for example if you're using a heated bed then it's probably not a good idea to print one out of PLA one of the small flaws with the current design is that the little spaces for the zip ties to stick out of don't really align as you tighten it up because a thread is used, you can't really very easily set the exact end point. It sort of gets close and it's aligned and then you tighten it because you obviously don't want it coming undone. And then it's miles past just because there's a small variation in print and a small variation in height gives you a big variation in the rotation. And that brings me on to my final point. Why use threads? I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad idea and we shouldn't use threads at all, but with all this complexity available to us, I'm sure there could be a better way to fix these two parts together without having to go through the whole rigmarole of spinning it and then it doesn't line up quite right. If we could just have something that clicks together and that gives you a lock, your locking me mechanism as well, I think that's gonna be a huge boon for the usability of the spool. And that brings me on to my final point. Why use a thread? It seems like the thread at its current design is taking up quite a lot of space internally here as well as through all of this part. I think if we could adapt the design for this to be a lot more empty space, it would make it a lot quicker to print. It would use a lot less filament. 
we can make it easy to put together. For example, it could just be a push and lock or just something that just locks straight in. And that will give you your locking mechanism that's needed to prevent any undesired rotation and therefore loss of the filament. So all in all, I think, yes, it's a brilliant design. Yes, it's the right way to go. And yes, I love it. So we've got the master spool printing, but it's far from perfect. The problem is that the filament keeps coming off the spool, like this. Well, not exactly like that, because normally I don't push it. But. You see, one of the big problems with the master spool is that it's just not very rigid. This is a rigid ink spool, and you can see between here and here, you have ribs. That's to keep it rigid for the rigid ink. That means this bit doesn't flex, whereas on the master spool, even when it's full of filament, it flexes. The problem with having flex is that it doesn't hold the filament properly. It's all just wobbly. If you look very closely at the spool, you can see just how loose that filament is. It's always moving. To temporarily fix the issue, I'm printing a little filament guide. That will sit up here between the filament spool and the frame, and it will help keep the, fil the filament central so it doesn't get pulled off either side. For now, I'm going to let this filament guide finish and then we'll put on an 8 or 10 hour print as an endurance test for the spool to see if it can, you know, endure a longer print. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, leave a comment, subscribe, like and all that sort of stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.